Welcome back. Hoping to inspire you to read your Bible every single day. Zero excuse. And well, I hope it's working. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 this week. 15 verses of nothing but stinginess. <laughs> I don't even know what that word means, but after we read these 15 verses, I think you'll have a clue. We're going to be talking about giving all week long money. Money! Money! for five days in a row. So let me make a disclaimer. Boys and girls, keep your hands and feet inside the cars at all times if you have lower back pain, suffering from heart ailments or neck impingement, if you have eye problems, ear problems, and or throat problems, and potentially pregnant or nursing mothers, you may not want to get on this ride this week. It's going to be a doozy. Let's jump right in. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 15 verses, New Living Translation. Here we go. I really don't need to write to you about this ministry of giving for the believers in Jerusalem, for I know how eager you are to help, and I have been boasting to the churches in Macedonia that you in Greece were ready to send an offering a year ago. In fact, it was your enthusiasm that stirred up many of the Macedonian believers to begin giving. But I am sending these brothers to be sure you really are ready as I have been telling them, and that your money is all collected. I don't want to be in the wrong in my boasting about you. We would be embarrassed, not to mention your own embarrassment, if some Macedonian believers came with me and found that you weren't ready after all that I had told them. So I thought I should send these brothers ahead of me to make sure the gift you promised is ready, but I want it to be a willing gift, not one giving grudgingly. Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully, and God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. As the scriptures say, they share freely and give generously to the poor, their good deeds will be remembered forever. For God is the one who provides seed to the farmer and then bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. Yes, you will be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. And when we take your gifts to those who need them, they will thank God. So two good things will result from this ministry of giving. The needs of the believers in Jerusalem will be met and they will joyfully express their thanks to God. As a result of your ministry, they will give glory to God. For your generosity to them and to all believers will prove that you are obedient to the good news of Christ. And they will pray for you with deep affection because of the overflowing grace God has given you. Thank God for this gift, too wonderful for words. It's going to be a good week talking about giving, and really, whether we believe in it or not, we do it. <laughs> Whew, it's just kind of how we label it, like giving. We all are giving. If you don't believe you're giving, just look at the beginning of the month and then go pay all of your bills. You just gave a whole lot away. <laughs> it doesn't feel like I'm giving, though. It feels like it's just a bill that I'm paying, but really, if we just look at it in light of money, money coming in versus money going out. Oh, we believe in giving all right. <laughs> I'm giving to the college. I'm giving to my credit card. I'm giving to the motorcycle fund, the guitar fund, the car fund. Well, I want to keep my lights on <laughs> and they're going to cut my power off today at three if I don't pay that and give them the money. <laughs> I think that might have been prophetic for someone. You may want to go check your light bill <laughs> because if you don't give, well, they cut your phone off, they cut your power off, they cut your TV off, and, uh, well, just try getting a speeding ticket and then telling the judge, I don't feel like giving. <laughs> it's not going to go well for you at all. It's going to be a pretty hard day. You see, we do believe in giving. We're working really hard, working our fingers to the bone, and, well, at the end of the month, nothing's really left over. Why? because I gave it all away <laughs> to me, to my stuff, to my necessities, to my hobbies. Well, I gave it to my boat fund. I gave it to my hunting fund. Well, hunting season is upon us now, and I do need a new bow and a new gun and a new rifle and a new pistol and a new deer stand. And well, 
You know how it goes. We do believe in giving. It's just I've labeled it as other things because when it applies to me and my needs and necessities, it doesn't feel like I'm giving. It feels like people are taking it from me. But if I really look at what Paul is saying, he says, look, I don't want you to give begrudgingly. I want you to give as you've purposed in your heart, which is not much, by the way, <laughs> because I don't have much left over because all the giving I'm doing is just, well, for me and my necessities and my hobbies. I don't have a lot left over at all. And so in other words, if we're labeling it, not just money, we're going to label it. Well, yeah, true. It doesn't feel like you're giving the hundred dollars to your cable provider or your three hundred dollars to your phone provider it doesn't feel like giving at all it just feels like that's a bill i have to have it and then therefore my giving goes into the category of well whatever i have left over and if i have enough left over then i'll think about giving so what if the whole ploy all along has been to get us so indebted to ourselves so indebted to our own feelings and emotions, so indebted to our own necessities, so indebted to my own hobbies, so indebted to my own happiness, because that's why I'm working to provide the things I really want to have to have a good life. Well, therefore, not much is left over. <laughs> Let's don't even go to the 10% tithe. <laughs> I don't even have that left over. <laughs> Whew, I may have about 2% left over. And well, then I'm supposed to save money, but I can't save money because I have nothing left over. And well, I think that might be the problem. I don't think the problem is we do or we don't believe in giving. I think the problem is we just give so much to ourselves and create our own necessities and create our own bills and create our own desires and create our own happiness that all of my hard work just goes for me. Oh, and then whatever's left over, I'll probably tip God a good $5. <laughs> I might even help a friend do something special so I feel good about myself because that's my leftovers. Well, it's going to be a fun week this week because we're going to really talk about how much do we really have left over or we really just focus more on ourselves our needs, and our necessities, so much so that every time I have something left over, I've already spent it on me because I'm saving all my leftovers for something I really want in the future. It's going to be a fun week. Buckle up and hold on. I'll see you tomorrow. We're going to have a blast. <laughs>